She asked me to describe the sound of snow falling softly in the mountains. I stood among the flurries until the tears came, until I couldn't stop them, not even if I'd wanted to. And after a good long while, I replied to her, you must let your heart break for want of love. You must listen carefully when you do. Whatever it is you hear then, that is it. That is the sound of snow falling softly in the mountains. You must let your heart break for want of love. And you must listen carefully when you do. Whatever it is you hear then, that, that is the sound of snow falling softly in the mountains. So this session uh, is a little different than the others. We've had a lot of conversation about knowledge gaps over the last couple of days. This is about gaps in heart and soul. And I would argue that unless we fundamentally address these gaps, filling the knowledge gap will only take us so far. All of you are here because some aspect of you has made a promise, a pledge, a commitment with your lives. I think all of us beings on this planet do this in some way, shape, or form, and this next poem is called The Vow, uh, and it's about the relationship between bear and salmon. This that we do with our lives is a vow, a promise, a service if we go about it humbly enough. When its golden eyes and gills become parched in the biting air and its gaze knows nothing more than what a hungry bear can offer of itself, it is done. There is nothing more to do. It is this. There is no other reason for any of us to struggle our way into this world as we do. All our lives we are called. Come, come, we hear this way. We call it longing because we have forgotten that we speak the usual language of wild things. Yet, up the river we go. We must. We must yield to this calling. Yes, this that we do with our lives is a vow. An agreement made in secret with something truly holy. A sacrament. Yes, I'll tell you how I know. I watched a sockeye salmon die, and for the first time, I really understood my life. So the ecology of spirit is one of reciprocity, a sacred reciprocity a giving and taking that are so intimate related that it become an act of unity. You see that happening in nature uh, between animals and plants and animals across ecosystems. Uh, but the potential is also there for us in relating to the wild. Uh, and this next poem is about uh, the intimacy, the sacred reciprocity uh, between man and nature in the Arctic context. It's called Song for the Reindeer. 
I owe you my life. No man can become a man without otherness. No man can become a man without otherness. You are other and you are me. We are of the same hoof and bone. When I consume your body, you are the knife and the spoon and the tongue of the ancestors. How otherwise starved and naked I would be. Cradle and sled, you've borne me into this world across the miles that no one cared to witness. My stride is a learned migration into myself. Only here can I know flight. I may be the breath, but you are the sound of my soul. This soft rhythm of the taiga, these branches snapping in the wind, the keepers drumming at the threshold of the world in which we are true brothers. Bloodlines, lifelines, there is only one world. And this music, this music that I have come to understand is a man's initiation. How could I ever be without you? How could I ever be without you? So I hadn't intended to do a Santa Claus poem, uh, but after getting here, it kind of seems like a necessity. Uh, so this and uh, the first poem I shared uh, are from a collection called Winter, uh, which was written after uh, about 10 days of lack of electricity following a snowstorm. Uh, and it's a combination of poems and what I call prose poems. So this is one of the prose poems. It's called When I Knew. The long ringlets of white synthetic hair were so many, I could only make out a nose. The red and white fabric of his hat, jacket, and boots was shiny and soft to the touch, but synthetic too. And the wide black belt, plastic. Most notably, the sprig of holly attached to him fake. If this was Santa, he was a man of little fashion sense and cheap. What's more, he was well preserved in a way that I didn't care to appreciate. His hands were absent wrinkles, not a one. Surely Santa should be a grandfatherly man. But there he sat, jollying it up on our floral couch with me in my floral dress sitting suspicious on his lap. Yes, as he handed me a small gift wrapped in pea green tissue paper, I was being told in no uncertain terms, this is Santa. How very disappointing. I decided to prefer the unknown and magic. Uh, so this one uh, came to me on the plane here uh, as I was uh, listening for what wanted to come through. So this one's called The White Bear. I had a few stuffed animals as a child. One was a soft white bear. I loved him. He comforted. He was given to me when I was in the hospital when people thought I was dying. I outlived that bear. It was a hot summer's day when I saw one at the zoo in a concrete cage with an algaed concrete pool that he paced the edges of, swinging his head back and forth as if saying no. And again, no, continuously no to his circumstances. Our eyes never met. If they had, I don't think I could have found his soul in there. I was a young girl then. I think his soul found me. 
and haunts me still. He paces at the edge of my dreams. We are all built for something. The white, bare mastery of the desolate, intimate places, of the interface of stark beauty and harsh realities. Me, a woman now, telling stories about the silences that must be heard by many. I don't know where our relationship is going, the white bear and me. Increasingly, our lives are about fragments, melting, fracturing, ice flows, and stories that don't fit together as well as they used to. Reconstruction isn't always possible. What happens when we can no longer trek long, formidable landscapes under paw or in the imagination? Do we die? I want to say no to these circumstances. We have to keep a place in this world for things that find no comfort in our company, but remind us that we long to know of them. I want, I want to outlive this moment. I want the white bear to outlive me. So one final contribution of voice. Um, these are some remarks that I have heard in the silences over the last few days. Uh, an expression of gratitude uh, for what has been here, but perhaps not given a lot of explicit uh, sound time in the conversations. So I want to invite you all to notice this glacier that is the tip of my feet. Oh, that's now out there. That's not okay. And you all have seen perhaps the polar bear stranded on an ice floe so far out that the distance is too great to swim, to land. Or maybe you've seen the images of the one that is still ambling across the landscape, but is nothing more but a sagging bag of bones. That's not OK. And you've seen the orcas that live here? Oh, wait. The orcas that are now living there? That's not OK. What the heck is this? Can you key this out for me, please? That's not OK. And the birds, the migratory birds, have you seen them? They breed up here, summer grounds. And then when winter comes, they fly this way. They go south. And then when winter is over, they come. They, that's your cue. They come. That's not OK. Those moments in your reality where you are feeling, where you're knowing, that's not OK anymore. That's the voice of the Arctic calling to you but because she knows that you can stand steadfast when everything else is changing. All of those moments in here that you feel that's not okay, that's you being called. So imagine with me for a moment, the cold wind coming in across the snow above the ice on the lake. And listen for the fox 
padding across that new snow. And as he pads across the new snow, the ptarmigan takes flight, frightened by the fox. And off in a distance, there's the snort of a caribou, maybe it's a moose, startled by the ptarmigan, and now heading off at a trot into the distance. And closer in the sound of your own breath, as it emerges and takes on a crystalline structure and moves out into the world. And closer in yet, there's your own heartbeat. There, fully present. My request to you is that you have the courage to let it be your own heart that melts. That you have the courage to remember your indigenous soul. and bring that unique relationship, that sense of service forward in reciprocity through your work and your commitment to the Arctic. Thank you all for your presence. <laughs>